Hello! Welcome to another free e-learning tutorial from dacanane.com. Today I'm continuing with my PowerPoint 2011 for Mac tutorials. In this tutorial I will show you how to add movies and audio to a presentation and then how to animate objects in the presentation. So let's get into it. I want to insert a video from YouTube and to do that I need to download a copy. As I switch to my browser that has YouTube open you can see that I have a download button under the video. I have this because I use Firefox as my browser and it allows me to install functionality add-ons to the browser, one of which is the download button feature. Add-ons can be found under the tools menu in Firefox and then when opened using the search function to search for the movie download add-ons. You can see here from my list that I already have several different add-ons installed to allow me to download videos from different sources on the net. If you want to find a specific tool that will download videos from a specific source, type in the name of the site, in this case Vimeo. Firefox then returns the add-on that will download from that particular site. To install the add-on you will need to restart Firefox. On the YouTube page you will now see an additional button that allows you to download a copy in the format that you desire. Once saved to your computer, to place the video onto your presentation it is simply a case of clicking on the media button on the ribbon under the home tab and browsing to your video file and clicking on it. PowerPoint now embeds the video into the presentation. I like to place my videos in a folder with my presentations as PowerPoint only links to the videos it does not copy them. So if you move your video or delete it, it will not be in your presentation anymore. Once in the slide, I have the ability to scale and position the movie object just as I can with any other object I place in the slide. Once the video is inserted onto the slide, I can then set the playback options. To check how the video will play, I simply right click on the video and select the action settings from the list that appears. By default, the action settings are set to play on click, but you can experiment with the settings if you want to, to get the effect that you want. Now I want to insert some audio onto the slide. The process for inserting audio is the same as video. I click on the media button and select the media from file option. I have already prepared the audio file I wish to use, so I simply browse to it and just like with the video, I click on it and the file will be linked to in the slide. This time PowerPoint creates a speaker icon. I want my audio to play automatically and I want the icon to be invisible. With the audio icon selected, the ribbon creates a format audio tab. Here I can manage my audio. Again, by default, the play option on the left of the ribbon is set to play on click. Using the drop down option, I can set this to automatic. And below this are the playback options. And here I can set the hide icon during show option. Now it's time to animate some objects. Again, I like to be consistent, so I use the same animation for similar objects. In this case, I like to use the dissolve animation for images, appear for text and fly in for arrows. To set an animation, simply click on the object to be animated and then click on the animation tab. Here you can select from a range of animations and the style you choose is entirely personal, but keep it consistent and choose animations that do not distract from the message. Opening the toolbox from the toolbar allows me to tweak the animations. By clicking on the effects options, I can set how the object will behave once loaded on the screen and the timing options allow me to set how the object will appear and in what order. With one object on the screen this level of control is not needed but with more objects and text this tool is an invaluable one. I'm now going to animate my text and arrow. I want the text to appear before the arrow and I select the appear animation option for the text and then I can use the toolbox to control how the text appears. With text, a new option appears in the toolbox, text animation, and th using this I can control how my bullet points appear. By selecting second level paragraphs and the on mouse click option, I can control the rate at which my bullets appear. With my edits in place, you can see the order that my text will appear indicated by the yellow numbers to the left of the words. Next I want to animate the arrow, and as I said, I like my arrows to fly in, so I select this animation option. However, the default direction for the arrow to move is from the bottom of the screen, 
and for a left pointing arrow this is not a particularly effective direction to move in. Again, I can control the directions via the toolbox menus. I like the arrow to move in very fast, but you can experiment with the timing you prefer in the timing options here. I can change the direction of the movement from the effect options drop down, and for my arrow I will select it for it to come in from the right of the slide. Remember that your chosen animation and layout schemes should be consistent and inconspicuous. Be subtle. Well, that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more free e-learning tutorials, and don't forget to share these videos with your friends. If you have a request for a tutorial, please let me know via the comments. So until the next time my videos hit your feeds, keep practicing!